Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how you can create a stopwatch within an actor component. Um, this way you'll be able to attach it to any actor easily and you can see it will give you this output um, with two digits for minutes, seconds, and milliseconds here. Um, this is right now in stopwatch mode but with a simple check of a box here if we recompile you will see that it can actually go into more of a timer mode and count down and it will still maintain two digits um, all the way across all right so let's show you guys how to do this so we're going to minimize this we're going to hop into a new project here and what we're going to do is right click in the content browser and we'll create a new C++ class and we're going to scroll down to actor component. We'll hit next and we will call this stopwatch and if you guys name this exactly as I have here it will save you some time um, when we copy and paste the C++ code in. Alright so we'll hit create class here and we will wait for Visual Studio to compile. Okay, now the Visual Studio is finished. What we're going to do is we're going to start in our header file here. This is a stopwatch.h, if that's what you named it. And what we're going to do is I want you guys to copy this line right under U class. And we're going to hit Control X. We're just going to move it up here and out of the way. We're going to need that um, in a little bit. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take everything starting with line one all the way down to this last curly brace here, including the semicolon. So everything above this line right here. Hit Control C. And we're going to paste that into our header file here. So we can just take this and Control V. Now if you named your um, actor component something other than stopwatch then you will need to rename this part right here. It won't be stopwatch.generated.h. It'll be whatever you named your actor component. This line right here Unreal will create for you based on whatever the name of your game is. So this is the line you're going to delete and we're going to replace it with this. This is the line that should have been auto-generated for you. So just control X and paste it right here. So underneath U class it should read class and then the name of your project API and then the name of the actor component whatever you name that with a U in front of it. Now we're going to head over to the C++ file here and what we're going to do now is take everything below this line here and we're going to copy that. And we will just copy over all of this. So you can just paste it in. And again, if you named it stopwatch like I did, then this will be fine. Um, you won't have to do anything here. If you didn't name it stopwatch, you named it something else, then your include file will be whatever you named it, dot h. And now we are going to hit build solution here. And we will wait for our solution to compile. Okay guys, and now that that's done, you should see down here it says build one succeeded. Um, if you see one that says failed, you either did not copy paste properly or you accidentally deleted something. Or the other thing I forgot to tell you guys, if you didn't name it stopwatch like I did, um, you will have to go through and see everywhere you have this turquoise U stopwatch. You're going to have to replace that with U and then whatever the name of your um, actor component is, which you can get from this line that we copy pasted here. So this will be auto generated for you. Like I said, you'll just have to go in there, copy this part, and then paste it here, here, 
and basically everywhere that you see these use stopwatch. And then if you compile that should clear up your errors. Okay, now that we have that taken care of, we have just created a C++ actor component, but what we really want to do is create a blueprint component based off of that class. So we'll right click here, we'll go to blueprint class, and we're going to search for all classes, and it's not coming up. So we may have to exit this and load it up again. Okay, now that we've restarted, if we right click here and we go to Blueprint Class, and now if we search for Stopwatch, you see it comes up here under Actor Component. So we'll click that and say Select, and we will call this Stopwatch BP. And what we're going to do is we're going to can save this. We will go into our third person character here. And then we'll show you guys how easy it is to now have a timer. We will just go to Add Component, look for Stopwatch, and select the one that says Stopwatch BP. And what we will do off of Begin Play, we will grab our Stopwatch BP component. And we can hit Compile. And what we're going to do is say call start timer. So this is the function that you need to call to start your timer. And if we look here, we have some defaults, start minutes and start seconds. And you guys can select whatever you want for those. But if we leave this, if we check this right here, and we just have the stopwatch BP. This will just start counting up from zero, so we won't put any minutes in or seconds right now. Now, if you drag out of here and search for timestamp, you'll see you'll get this string, and we will just print this string. And we'll run this off of a tick, just so that we can continuously see what this is printing. And this string right here, guys, is already formatted in a timestamp. So 00 colon 00 colon 00. So we'll hit compile and save. And we will hit play. And as you can see, we have a nice little timer counting up right now. And as it gets to 10, you'll see it handles this transition perfectly. And if you guys wanted to wait all the way up until 59 seconds, you'll see that it adds up to the minute. Now we can also uncheck this, and it will function as a timer. So it will count down. And here I'll start it at 1 minute and 5 seconds, just so you guys can see a uh, transition. And we'll hit play. You see it starts at 1 minute 5 seconds. And then it transitions nicely into double zeros and just the seconds. Now, there's a few other things that you can do with this. You can also clear the timer. This will stop the timer wherever it's at. You can pause the timer. You can unpause the timer. So we can test some of these things out. If we give this a delay, let it delay for a couple seconds. We'll pause the timer. And then I'll give it another two second delay. We will unpause the timer. And then another delay. And we'll clear the timer. So you guys can see all of these things, how they function. So we're going to start. We have our timer going for a couple seconds, and you see it pauses, waits a couple seconds, continues, waits a couple more, and now it clears the timer. And you see nothing else. There's no more changes um, to the timestamp value. So this is how you know the timer isn't running anymore. 
And one last um, neat thing you guys can do with this, there is a built-in function um, that you can set for when the timer runs out. So if we go back into the stopwatch BP, we don't need any of these. And you can just right click here and search for time is up. And you see a nice little event comes here that says time is up. And we'll just have this print. We'll say timer has finished completed. And we'll make this red. Hit compile and save. Now we'll go back here, and I'll get rid of the minute, and we'll just have it do five seconds. Hit compile and save. We'll hit play. And I'll see if I can, there you go. You see that? Timer has finished, completed. And now it just shows you all zeros. So if you guys wanted to script something off of that, um, you very easily could um, script something right after the timer finishes and hits zero. The last thing I wanted to show you guys with this um, timer here, if we select the timer here, you can see the uh, start minutes and seconds. It has um, built-in error handling. So if you try and scroll below zero, it won't let you. And it'll s allow you to set seconds all the way up to 59. So anywhere zero to 59. The minutes, it won't let you go below zero. But you can pretty much go as high as you want with those. And the other thing that you guys should know, if you drag out of here and you say get here we can look under the stopwatch category. These uh, variables here, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, these are all the actual um, variables during the calculation. So if for whatever reason you wanted access to the exact timestamp as a variable, as a float instead of as a string, and you wanted to do something when you know the minutes hit two or you know the seconds were at 30, whatever you want, you guys do have access um, to those variables here, like this. And you can also set, if you wanted to dynamically um, set the minutes or the seconds, you can do that. You don't have to um, hard code them here in the editor. Uh, one warning though, if you do it this way, there is no um, error handling. So if you set the minutes to like negative five and the seconds to, you know, 600, it will take those values. Just a warning for you guys. Um, so be careful if you do that. And I'll just show you guys real quick. So I guess it did not like those. It just started at zero. Let's make these minutes five instead of negative. There you go. So you see it will take in five minutes and 600 seconds if you set it directly like this. So this is a safe way to go. Um, if you use this, just be sure you're putting in actual times. Alright guys, I hope you thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. Alright, see you guys later.